Hello, it's me again, and we're going to go over question two in the 1974 physics scene mechanics. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, our question's a fairly simple, well, at first it looks simple, question. We have a spear rolling down a plane, but not slipping. Its moment of inertia is, let me just read this down, two-fifths m r squared. And I think that's all they give us. Besides, it's rolling about something. Now, it wants to define, and don't be surprised here, the minimum the coefficient of friction. And you're like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? Like, you know, you're, you're thinking like that, but there's a, there's a way to do this. So, we have start. Well, what is the f of f? I think the best way to go around this, actually, first of all, dry corn system. And we know mg goes straight down, right? Not asking for a force diagram, but you should always draw one when you can. mg goes straight down, right? But in the direction, we have to remember that the um, friction doesn't go straight down. Okay? And the friction goes per uh, perpendicular to the normal force and in the opposite direction of motion. So this is a normal force, right? We don't care about, well, we actually do care about that. This is f of n, right? So f of f is not only perpendicular to this, but in the opposite direction of motion. Of course, we're going to be going down to the gravity, but our normal force and friction um, are going to be perpendicular, normal, same thing, and they are going to be in this direction, friction. So we now have an equation for f equals ma. But we're not there yet. The easiest way to do this is, first of all, to find what friction equals. Friction equals. And we know from our equations, is equals to coefficient of friction times f of n, which equals coefficient of friction times mg. Now, the tricky part. Remember that mg in the x direction will be cosine, because we drank a right triangle here. We want here. We want this, not this. So this will be cosine the angle. So cosine theta. And they are the same angle, believe me, on this one. They are. And, I mean, there's a way to prove it, but I'm not going to prove it right now. Because, and this also is correct. What does it matter? Of course, I would dedicate you to proving this if you can, using just some triple, triple trigonometry, but I'm going to save time and not prove it. Now that we have what this equals, the problem we are posed with is how to find that in terms we know. We know theta, we know mg. Actually, we don't know mg. We don't know that. We just know the moment of inertia. And here lies our problem. So, we have a variable we don't know. I mean, we don't know any of them. <laughs> but we have a variable they don't give us. So now we have to resort to a different tool. Well, remember, that torque equals inertia times angular velocity. Angular acceleration, sorry. So, what is torque? Well, it's the force, right? times the radius, and what is angular acceleration? Well, we could put it in terms of the regular acceleration by doing a over r equals n. And that's an empty trick. In case you didn't realize how to convert linear to angular, there's a trick for you. And the same thing applies with velocity. And uh, radians, I would, I think this is a little different, so I'm not going to give you that. But we don't need that right now. We only need the acceleration one. So f times r equals 2 fifths m r squared times a over r. And because of the commutative property, we can cancel these out. And we're left with, divide these out too, actually. So f equals 2 fifths m a. And this is what's going to be the key. Because we know if also f equals m a here, we can simply substitute this in, right? But there's a problem we're missing here. There's a problem. That's just uh, one force that we have. That's not all the forces that we need. That's going to be on the right side of our equation. Or it's going to be one of the components of our equation, I should say. Because f equals ma. That reason. So this is the same as the frictional force, I believe. So we said these equal to each other. all these m's in times by a, by the house. So, 
a equals 5 apps mu g cosine theta. And that's our, what is part of the problem too. We all, we need all these little um, things here for a reason. And this comes down all to this now, back to f equals ma. When we go over to f equals ma, well, we know this is a, and it's times by m again, right? And this is all going to work, watch. So we do our, because this is why our fourth time comes handy, we need all the net forces in the x direction. That'd be f of f, this way, and m, and uh, what's it called? mg in that direction. So, it all comes down to this now. So mg sine theta, because we want this direction here. Or is it cosine? No, it is sine. Because it's an inclined plane. I forgot, I got, you got to switch those in an inclined plane, right? So, mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta equals mu 5 halves g sine theta. Actually, there is an n here. So all these m's cancel, as well as g's. So you're left with sine of theta minus mu cosine of theta equals 5 halves of mu sine of No, cosine. This is cosine. Oh, I want sine. All right, so let me move this over more. I have a really like white words hard to fit all on camera. I wish I could, but uh, there's our equation now. I don't know why I put sine a. Look, there's our thetas, by the way. I don't know why there's a's there. Theta. And lastly, all we have to do is solve for mu. So we move these mu's over to the same side, right? Sine theta equals mu cosine theta plus five halves mu cosine theta. We can factor out a mu, right? Sine of theta equals, in fact, factor out 5 halves plus 1, right? Because we can make this off. Five, 2 of 2, so it's going to be 7 halves mu cosine theta, divide by cosine theta, so we get 2 7 tangent of theta equals mu. And that's your answer. And that is a 2, by the way. That is 7, 2 over 7. Two sums tangent of theta. And that is part A. <laughs> Believe it or not, that is part A. So now what's part B? Well, lucky for you, part B is not nearly as hard as part A. Thank goodness, right? All part B asks is if there's no which basically just means there's no friction. Would it be faster, slower, or the same speed? And it would be faster. Common intuition tells you this, right? But they want to know, in physics terms, why? Well, there is a reason why, and I'll tell you why. Well, think of it this way, in conservation of energy. If you have one half mv0 squared plus w0 mc equals one half mv squared, well, this is, if you have friction, this is going to be lower than this. If you don't have friction, it's going to be equal, right? So, the velocity to make up for the lost friction has to be faster. This one has to be faster, because now this is larger, this has to be larger, it's going to be faster. Faster because they have the same energy in both scenarios. Therefore, the velocity must be greater in the second scenario. And I know you can't read that, but I'll read to you again. Faster because they have the same energy in both scenarios. Therefore, the velocity must be fat greater in the second scenario. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.